back to Let's Play Kerbal Space Program with me, one of the black women. We are currently in the process of uh, testing some new prototype vessels and stuff. After testing, no, this engine cannot get this thing off the ground. It can, however, sink it into the ground. Okay, look. I'm trying to implement some new advances in our tech. So let's try and do that. Specifically, okay, let's get really basic here. Basic command pod. Let's just build a rocket that will demonstrate some of the things I'm trying to talk about. Slap an advanced SAS module. Some RCS fuel. Alright, do we need some support? Some RCS thrusters. Don't worry, everybody, I didn't like learn what I was doing or anything. Oh no, that's not it. Parachute 2 would probably be a good idea. There we go. That's obviously the final stage. Um, but... We need... Oh, just a great many things. Alright, battery on there. Even though the thing is not going to be unmanned, I always feel like putting a battery on it anyway is a good idea. One of the thermal electric generators, but we're not going to mess with that too much. Uh, what we're going to concern ourselves with messing with is something to get us into uh, orbit. So let's see about that. One of these, and one of these. Now the advice I got was to stop making my rockets so tall, and um, yes. So what we need to do is make a plan here. Specifically, it got tall again. It's this thing that I'm trying to I'm trying to use the big pieces instead of trying to keep it simple. Okay, total mass is 1.25 on that engine. That's uh, about the lightest engine we could probably. No, that's the lightest engine we could give it. Probably pretty efficient on fuel usage too. Yeah, we've used that engine model before to great effect, as I recall. about what we're going to do here. Connect it with that, yes. We'll want it firing on the same stage. And we're going to try to implement 
something called the asparagus stock system, which I tried to implement last time, but it didn't work all that well. We're gonna see if this will do better. Okay, we're gonna do vectored thrust on this. decouplers. I think that's what I want. better would be six. Six layers of symmetry. You know what, that's what I should have done. Probably a way to keep it freaking symmetrical too. In any case, um, I'm gonna demonstrate why I should have never been allowed around rockets. Apparently putting SAS units on these things does something. I'm not... I'm not entirely sure, but I'm willing to give it a try. That is the correct size nose cone, right? Yeah, it looks like... Because the thing is... Um, well, there's a bunch of things, but see now is that off center? I think it is. That made it worse. There's gotta be some simple way to do this shit. I'm gonna wrestle with this for a while, see if I come to any great epiphanies about life. I'm almost tempted to make that and then launch it. No, it won't even go. <laughs> the game won't even accept that input. Alright, so with some testing, I've gotten this thing basically into orbit. It's a little eccentric. But the thing is, this last stage with the same engine we mounted on our satellites, very efficient. Very good for this kind of orbital thing. I'm actually going to kill it before we hit orbit, though. But the thing is, this platform, the one I was building, can make orbit. And basically now I'm just practicing in terms of executing 90 degree turns to do things called gravity turns and all sorts of stuff. And I'll show a little bit of the technique for that. I'm right now just practicing. But basically it involves using the nav ball and not being an idiot, both of which are things I am somewhat new at. So. We're actually just going to bring her in at this point. Uh-oh. I detached our stages. That debris is probably going places.
Where exactly is hard to say. Uh, that's probably going nowhere. Not at this point. <laughs> we just, um... Oh no. Oh shit. Oh, don't break the parachute. Oh my fucking god. There goes the engine. Oh my god. We took the deceleration on the flat side. Okay, so first of all, this would kill him if deceleration physics and like friction and atmospheric things were in. As it is, and against all odds, our test pilot Dildon here, despite my staging ignorance, may just survive this encounter. Yeah, he knows it's... He knows things are cool. We just need the parachute to not snap off. We are getting decelerated. Yeah, he's made it. He's made it home. Okay. Um, this is the rocket that got us. That it'll get us into orbit. There's no, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Oh, what the hell? Purple space program. What are you doing? What are you doing? I just wanted to rip off the winglets. Because these things don't wobble. Which, uh, I don't know, I prefer the ones that wobble. Those seem to be okay. Now. This really is just a test unit, so that I can get practice doing the gravity turns and stuff, which is the first part of our major leap forward, and now we will see. Because this is just a basic rocket design that, um, it works. Jebediah, back in the pilot seat. Oh yeah. Jerb. Let's get ready to rock this, and hopefully it doesn't tip over on the pad. Jeb's not so thrilled about this. Uh, we should be good with the stages we've set up. So let's rock it. Let's go over team. Yeah, Jeb's loving it. First stage, we just accelerate until we hit terminal velocity. And which is different at different altitudes. It's basically when you're drag. Um, terminal velocity is when going any faster doesn't really help. It doesn't help as much as it would because of stuff and drag and air stuff. So we're going to ease up on that throttle. start turning downwards, more or less. Oh, 
So like, this isn't actually the way you do it, but it is. It is kind of the way you do it. And you see, we're climbing and we're widening our orbit. And there's a way to do the, which is most efficient and and most good. I'm probably not gonna do that. Let's kick in the throttle a little bit just to give ourselves some kick here. But you can see, as far as our orbits so far go, that is pretty much the way to do it. Well, obviously, this isn't really the place to... I don't know. Now that we're up here, maneuvering is a bit less tricky, so we'll continue to nose down. Not entirely to the horizon, but mostly to the horizon. We'll get Jerb here into orbit with plenty of fuel to spare, I think. This transfer stage is doing just fine for that. As you can see, at this point we definitely just want to be nosing down until we get it to the horizon. Uh -huh. We gotta wrangle with the controls a bit, but look, we're not even using our thruster fuel at this point. Let's kill the throttle. Wait until we're over here, then we'll do the rest of our burn, I think. And that's sort of how you do the thing called a gravity turn. I wish I could set my app lapse. This is my target, so I know that I haven't passed it. Because it would be cool to spend some time, like, just time passing in this mode. Oh man, especially with the sun rising and stuff. Those are down just to this point of... I guess the rotation doesn't matter all that much. The ship is not under acceleration, that's the SAS. Honestly, the last little bit of fuel here... Let's use that up, as a matter of fact. May as well use that up and let the debris fall back to Kerbin. There we go. And then with the last of this, we'll make a little bit. Bye, debris. We'll wait till getting near the apoapsis again, which is what the smart people do. We are T minus 40 seconds from the apoapsis. That is. That's close enough for me, honestly. Probably cutting it a bit too close. And then we burn. Burn sky till we see lines. This debris is set to fall harmlessly back to Kerbin, but we are going to get Jer back into orbit, then we're going to get him back home. And here we go. That's about. That's about how we like it. That's really how we like it. Three fifty, two twenty. That's fine. That's in orbit. Uh, I tell you what. Since we're up here, and pretty much the goal of this mission is to mess with orbits and stuff, and see what we can do. Jerb's loving it. He's got plenty of fuel to get back home. What we're going to do is burn at the apoapsis. In order to increase that, we're going to get them both to about 400,000. We're going to get them both even down. And a the only eccentricity in the orbit was introduced when I kind of messed around with that. But And I believe our debris just fell to Kerbin. 
We should probably be putting parachutes on that, but we're the Lunar Space Program, and thus we de-gaff. We just de-gaff. Okay. Okay. Let's get ourselves oriented for a burn. Now, the thing that we want to be doing is widening that. So let's look. We are now burning directly retrograde our course. That is having the opposite effect of what is desired. It is shrinking the orbit. Therefore, we've got to get this thing turned around. I'm doing it the lazy way instead of trimming it out, which is why I love having SAS on here. Get ourselves turned about. This is the proper way we want to be facing. And we pretty much wait for the apoapsis to come in. At about T minus 30 seconds, we'll kick in the burn. Alright. And kick in the burn. And there we go. We're doing what we want. Which is sort of the point. I mean, this is a sandbox game you run around in and you play around in. But this is, um... This, this mission is literally just me playing with orbits to see how they work. Which I should have done before the lofty goals. But hey. In fact, let's get this to 350,000... And then let's wait, go around, and shrink that to 350,000. I think I introduced additional eccentricity into the orbit. But again, I mean, compared to our previous attempts, this is me, like, making an effort. Descent into darkness. So, in order to widen the orbit, we thrust towards our motion. In order to shorten the orbit, we thrust away from the motion. Okay, let's get ourselves turned around. Actually, we don't really need to get ourselves turned around all that much. We just... We just burn, like so. And that should have, more or less, the desired effect. Yes, yes, yes. It is shrinking it. We won't get it perfect, but we can get it just about perfect, and with very little fuel use as well. Yeah, now see, we're... These might actually switch places. Which is sort of how you know the orbit is evened out. 330, 352. You know what? That is way closer than anything I've ever done before, so... We will call that an orbit. I hope this will at least satisfy the viewer that I am making the attempt to get slightly better at this game. Who better than Jerbadiah to have this? Okay, so that's orbiting. We know we can do that. But the piloting and the design are both important parts of this game that it's important not to neglect. We are just going to ride around a bit in this nice orb that we've picked up. And we're going to go it a thousand times. Suspended here. Moving with the awesome machinery that we put in motion. Whee! Jeb is just loving it. He's just living. He's living the good life. I wonder. What happens if we take. What happens if we take SAS off? About the same. I mean, we're not moving any. Okay, so let's do a project. Let's land at Kerbal Space Command. 
let's come back around before we try and do that one more time and then let's go back around towards the periapsis or at least more in that direction alright once we're about there we will turn retrograde our motion look at me look at me doing rocket science or at least pretending to in a computer game okay now prepare to burn is that doing what I wanted to? it sort of is yeah it is actually we're gonna try and land as close to Kerbal Space Program as we can. Yeah, there we go. That is actually quite what we want. And it look very fuel efficient way to burn. We're just shrinking the periapsis, bringing her down. Even though we're past our apoapsis. So this is not as efficient of burning as we could have. We have to take into account the atmosphere as well. So I'm going to cut it out here because that will land us. <laughs> that will most assuredly land us. We're going to get grabbed by the atmosphere. And we'll bring her in for somewhere near Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, the atmosphere will most assuredly... See, this is the point where we are getting nabbed by the planet. Or at least that's where it's going to start to happen. Yeah, see, we can't do over four times warp now. Because we are going down. That's pretty apparent. 